There we go. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Anne. All right. Hey, Kevin. Nice to see y'all. All right. Well, I came in a little early um, just to say hello. And thank you guys for being here. Um, I did want to jump in with a little not poetry business. Um, the Roachstones Duff House is doing a survey, like a community survey, um, to help their, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Some sort of fundraising um, report that they have to do every few years, um, development project or something like that. Uh, I'm going to share the link in the chat, but if you've had any fun at the RJD with us, um, if you could fill out the survey and help them out, that would be fantastic. Um, it helps Jessica, our lovely friend Jessica, do her job better and easier. Uh, and it helps us probably uh, keep doing cool, free things at the RJD. <laughs> um, so I'm going to drop that link in the chat in a little bit. Um, if you're part of the New Bedford, Greater New Bedford community, um, I think they're looking for like Bristol County folks. So, you know, anywhere within Bristol County. Um, and I think even beyond, because if they get cool visitors, they get cool visitors. So, um, yeah, that's a little project for us, a little community service project for us um, as, as uh, community members who benefit from the beautiful RJD. Um, so that's all the housekeeping I have on that end. Uh, I hope, did anybody catch us uh, live streaming on the CBPA? Uh, Facebook last week for the CVPA Star Series. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, that was wild. It was a lot of fun. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you didn't get to go check it out, the live stream is still available on the CVPA Star Stream uh, Star Series Facebook. Uh, I think it's they don't have a dedicated Facebook page. It was just for uh, just for um, the CVPA. You, you messed our myth. Um, so that's still up and running. And they did another one tonight with um, visual artists. So our friend, Andrew Kapinski, who's a photographer and DJ, he did a cool set where he was like projecting his photos behind him while spinning some, some records. Very cool. They had an art demonstration, um, stuff like that. And that's going on until April. Um, so that is why we're starting a little later tonight, eight o'clock, so that you can go and enjoy those live streams from six to eight and then come on over here and hang out with us. Um, they're going to be doing live music next week, which is going to be rad and fun. Um, and then thir the last Thursday of the month are performing arts, uh, which I don't know. They haven't announced anybody yet. They usually do that the week before. Um, so I don't know what's coming up, but keep an eye on that Facebook page. And of course, we'll be sharing that info. And then Spoken Word starts again next month on March 4th, I believe it is. Um, so we'll be doing another round of Spoken Word with a few more local poets. Um, if you keep your eye out for an email from Nickel Blank, if he's asking you to join our lineup, um, because couple of you were named on my list on my list of poets <laughs> to, to invite um and I think Nick and I overlapped a couple times on that so um definitely keep your eyes open for an email from Nickel Blank um I think that's it uh what do I have here in the chat oh thank you Catherine yes Carnelian from the 70s <laughs> big gorgeous crazy earrings. Um, thanks so much. <laughs> uh, all right. I think, oh, it's still a few minutes, but let's get kicking. Uh, so if you want to read, throw your hand up or drop it in the chat. Um, if you're looking to read tonight, Kevin, I saw that. Anne, very good. Andrew, I know you're doing something, but uh, if you want to jump in, I'm going to, I'm going to let Kevin go first and then Anne, you're on deck. Kevin, I am asking to unmute you. Okay, I'm unmuted, I think. <clears throat> Can you hear me fine? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so three, right? Okay, so first of three. 
That's good. I can't hear any, I can't hear, well, I guess you're trying to avoid feedback loops, but see, I like feedback loops. In fact, that would, that would be everything that would happen. But anyway, but that might annoy people when they go, what's wrong with your sound? It's all feedback. And I'd go, what's right with the sound? It's all feedback. All right. So, um, so we'll do three and this is a, this, uh, um, um, I'd like to say that um, Sarah mentioned uh, last Thursday, which was the CPVA, the Star Store reading. And that was really cool because Sarah was there. And, and I feel like I'm on like Romper Room or something. And I saw Andrew and I saw Nick and I saw Patricia and I saw Maya. Oh, it was so, it was awesome. It was really cool. And I was so happy to get to see see those good folks and they were all seem they're all like they're 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 in the zone i'll say that I'll, it's i'm really like i'm losing bad when i'm start using sports analogies you know i'm desperate but whatever yeah i shouldn't say that when sarah's drinking i shouldn't say anything funny when anyone's drinking um okay so this is called popping Bo wearing bad and swats a wee pup oh I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm going to try to take a key from Sarah. I mean, sometimes there are some dark things happening in some of these poems. This one has a sort of a bad thing happening. So I'm going to be vague about it, but it involves death and critters dying, cute critters dying. So it's not that graphic, but it's not that it's not it's not something it's not a Disney moment. So, OK. So, all right, so I'll take it. Uh, that's my trigger warning for that. Okay, popping. Bo wearing bad and swats a wee pup. Some folks have a thing about thing for those 2D critter dyads. One good, one bad. Makes for drama and stories and certainty. Perhaps a few laughs. Having had a belly full of all that, can't say any creature is pure anything. Tiny dog conniving cat. Of course, there's, it's some cartoon, but tell folks they don't want to know. Long ago, saw, saw a dopey, sweet, giant St. Bernard chomp kittens in the hay. I don't think he was hungry. Didn't eat them so much as casually snapped them. Dead, 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 dead. No harm meant. Guessing they they just looked like something to kill where the dog was playing. Forget where the mom cat was or how she worked into things. Seeing unneedful death was enough indeed more than I wanted to see. So enough of cartoons and those thinking in cartoon th terms, dog may or may not play nice with others, cat or whatever else as well. I only respect those who are in actual competition as in it's the mice or the rats or me who will get the pantry cheese or say, the rabbits or the groundhogs in the garden or me who will get the turnip greens. Even so, that would be their call, not mine. Otherwise, killing just to kill with no solid reason why. No thanks. Someone smarter and more eloquent than I said, innocence is a panther with a bell in its neck and the clapper felt it still. Could be a St. Bernard or me or you or who or whatever else in the barn side bay without malice, just a game, little things to snap, popping blisters in bubble wrap. Okay, so that's 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 number one. Thank you, bless you. All right, so num that was number one and you can see that why I gave you the trigger warning on that. Um, anyway, I mean, could have been could have been worse, but anyway, could have been better. This one's just called "Never Mind the Mary Ann." Yeah, sometimes I change words in my head, so that's why I'm just kind of staring at things. Never, never mind the Mary Ann. Knowing few Mar named Mary or Ann or Ann, and certainly, well, and surely few Mary Anns or Mary Anns or so on. I can say there's a boat at the marina called the Mary Ann. No, it's not real. Even if there were such a boat somewhere, I have never seen it. 
and can wonder free, or free and clear if it's named for the wife or the lost first love of the ex-girlfriend or the owner herself, Captain Marianne, plying this river on to deeper waters. Names, I don't know. Names, I don't remember. To comp a phrase from the great Howard DeVoto, I have a good face for memories. If that, and that's all. So like in some game of life, little um, automata, <clears throat> so like in some game of life, little automata that replicate and conjoin to make more of themselves. We named you after your father's favorite great aunt. The second name came from your mother's father's mother or the queen who died or the sea that bore Jesus and Joseph and Mary Fatima too. And every little fish that became more fish at the banquet, the mare apparent of all things living, the water, the ocean, the bath in the river, the cold zinc bucket down a well drawn at lunch just to keep field hands alive in August. So one might call back to the non-alignment litany, Peter Thomas sings or shouts all those women and more, Perubu shaking out the loud ink of long Ohio nights. So it is that Mary and Anne can make Mary Anne or Anne Marie while the water line holds and the boat floats free. That's the end of poem two. Thank you. But, uh, thanks. Tip your waitresses. Okay, um, this is poem three. And this is called Birding. So another parent sort of thing or present participle or whatever the heck it is. Um, birding. You and you and I and we are bound to fail to quickly know and sort out well and wisely act upon what is needful and what is noise. The things we all feel alone and whinge about that haunt and never leave. Yet here we are and alive and well with someone else to tell, left to tell. <clears throat> Though likely long past time to let all such things go, we don't stop loving or caring about the ones we have to stop listening to. Even those, even when those ones are ourselves failing to shut up about old things and new about which we can do nothing, no. Love and care live on well past our listening. You can call it wear and tear. I prefer discipline or folk call it focus. Better to hear and know frail things beside and beyond our cries for comfort, to know all, to know us all for our songs and how we sing them. Okay, that's the end. That was the end of the third poem. So someone else, thank you. Thank you for both very much. Thank you all. Uh, you invisible snappers out there. Thank you too. Okay, I'm gonna mute. <laughs> or I am muted, no. Uh, I, will mute. I can mute you. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Duh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Kevin. Uh, Anne, are you ready to go? All right, I'm asking to unmute you. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. And I uh, I went last week to the event and I was outside. Oh, cool. it, it was so fun to see you Yay. guys in person because I've never met you. And I keep forgetting that I've never met you. That's I, true. So You're only in the Yeah, it was like a see, I was a total groupie. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. Great. I was so impressed. It was so fun. Oh, that's so yeah. fun. Yeah. Good. Well, hopefully. You know, fingers crossed that you get to be an in-person friend when we can be in person <laughs> but I that's know. awesome thank you so I much know. for coming yeah all um, right <laughs> take it away okay. yeah um okay i have uh three poems uh for now <clears throat> wet nurse it wasn't weird that's my bed my faucet my view my abandoned palm, my palms. You've let both get brittle and sharp, fingers and leaves from dehydration and neglect. Months passed up till the ring. No festering wound, no chance a call any could worm like a splinter or a sperm into membrane of a heart. No cursory, hasty cursory healing required, nor shoddily formed makeshift thersonari. We had eased into parallel worlds. 
but my sea train never intersected your two to Wall Street. I suppose it must have once under our flip-flopping pale feet when we nibbled street corn kebabs on a rare hand-in-hand -hand Sunday at, in Columbus Circle. But that seems like dimensions and changes of clothes ago. Well, it wasn't that kind of call anyway, if you're wondering about the sincerity of sutures. You just needed me, just someone, but you had the nurse style me. Your voice was limper than I remembered. The one that went on about the importance of starched white shirts and monochromatic ties. So I stayed over. What's one more night after countless handfuls? And I knew the unstarched you, the you with cotilla and yogurt sauce dripping down your once a week scruff chin. I had chaperoned you out of the ER, tucked you into your bed, filled the water from your faucet so you could take the back pain pills I picked up at your Dwayne Reed and stayed up the night looking over the city from your window view. And I settled into smug. Nothing on the walls or in the fridge. A beach chair had replaced our couch. The parquet flooring was just surface. And the only sign of light, life was the wilting plant. <laughs> Some. Who's up for a four? Some of my clubs are missing. Persons of a certain tea time begins at four. Hours to finish 18 holes patched with mismatched plaid bow ties to note drinks at the club. A nine will do to pitch in for a three words would have been enough for a whole life. Okay, and <laughs> this is the third. Vintage Vantage. The newer bone white and ebony spotted dog breathes in my ear. Humid short huffs of a miniature bellows of little use to its heart. I found an antique bellows once then gave it to my mother along with a faux rabbit and wool blend stole smartly wrapped in witting pulpy paper. She fancied collecting dogs and bellows that adorn brass and irons buttressing gas fireplaces around the house. Worn black leather lined and copper inlaid with the molded form of an English baker or blacksmith. It now lies props, propped against the kitchen wall below a prim shelf peppered with white porcelain figurines of Dalmatians. The other present pills in a cedar lined closet near officially bulbous pearls that hide red faced during grandmother's visits. These two incarnate champion dogs have grown pot-bellied over the years, boiled not from table scraps of bought bread, warmed not by a smoking heart, but in the chrome-faced oven. Fond old and young are of baking themselves beside glass meant to harness clicked on flames each morning. The latter's coaching breath, breath has slowed to resting horsey. Perched on the ivory cushion topped bench we share outside on this finery fall day. She prefers fabric to grass, unlike those likenesses. I can see ponies prance through the window. Mounted riders mounted on walls of the foyer. British polo players hold fast to reins, hemmed in by frames of pronounced ilk. Swaths of hued oil paint the texture of earned breath. Dense long huffs of immaculate chiseled beef. If we seamlessly translate bow to bow, animal to, to handler, object to spectator, angle or old friction, I wonder, wonder, would these windows, breath doors, air or dare to weld centuries of craft, pomp, and breeding transcend the need for displayed ciphers toward tacit two way clues? In the meantime, I palm a furry hug. Bird in the seat is worth two in its home. Excellent. Thank you so much, Anne. All right. Mr. Tedesco, I see you've joined us. Are you ready to go? Yeah. All right. How we doing, y'all? Happy Aha. Happy Aha. Um, 
<laughs> <laughs> you know, and just throwing down over at the CVPA. Uh, I, I really want to check that out uh, later on. If if you haven't, obviously they'll be posting it to the uh, the CVPA page. Um, it looks it's it's just amazing over there right now. Just you know what I mean to to actually be the outsider looking in. Uh, it was weird being on a stage and seeing people like again, <laughs> like especially for the fact that it's actually a stage. Um, so yeah, uh, you know what I mean. I still, I still really enjoy this. I enjoy this community that we have, that we've built, that still is still just persisting. The, you know what I mean, the Zoom fatigue, and uh, I do look forward to these every time that we are able to get together. So, Sarah, thank you for always just, you know what I mean, being the captain of the ship, and I have no problem being a first or second mate. Uh, along with uh, the amazing Mr. Nick LeBlanc. Uh, I think we make a great trio and we have been doing and we have been cultivating some beautiful things. Uh, but obviously that none of those things happen if it wasn't for the community that we have. Um, so I'm gonna try this guy again, uh, which I read uh, on, is it Tuesday or Thursday that we do over at um, the CVPA? So it's a th so it's the first Thursday of the month that we just keep, that we just kind of keep it moving. Okay, I, I'm just trying to like keep these things like there, <laughs> especially with starting the new job soon. Uh, so when I go into, you know what I mean, to be like, so uh, I have a couple requests. That's okay. I know I'm just starting, but yeah, here's the thing that I kind of do that I think I'm okay at. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, so this I read uh, on the stage. This was my my first poem that I started with. It's a it's a pretty brandy new poem. Uh, I'm not sure. How, I'm still kind of like feeling it out a little bit. Uh, so this is America after uh, Amanda Gorman. America, your pages are still being written. Your past is bold as revolution, as civil unrest, as civil war, riddled with problems of pain, of privilege, of servitude, but our past only defines us if we let it. So I ask of you to not allow it, to put in the work that is required of growth, of building, that if we cannot abide by the roots of being under God, goddess, by religare, to bind back, to make whole, that there should be true separation of church and state, but I still want you to believe that under shooting stars across amber waves of plains, that we can still plow towards a new tomorrow to sow seeds of hope, of unity, of beginning again, that our spirits will move as these bodies die. We do not need to know the ending as long as we know the intention is good. Thank you. Uh, and I don't know when I wrote this one that just happened to be in another book that I was just kind of uh, perusing. Uh, it's kind of untitled, so I'm just going to kind of roll with it. Um, Home is where the heart is, so they say. What if you've been apart from the vessel, from the feeling that is fleeting, wing, wings beating, butterflies in a field, and our stomachs or fruit flies by the sink. What makes you think, where did they come from? Why won't they go? Where did we go? how we get here? The air, the air mattress in the living room with no heat from the oil running out, burning wood, burning candles at both ends. Some say to make amends, to cram your life into a 10 by 20 room with a pull out couch to without a doubt feel like it's hopeless to store in a blank by blank by blank box to feel like you failed. Thank you. Uh, and for, for round one, I will end with uh, this poem that I feel very fondly about, uh, uh, which is called Marmalade. I now fondly associate Marmalade with Paddington, yes, the bear with the hat and jacket. Jacket!
is it cold outside? I always felt awkward as a child for enjoying orange marmalade or apple jelly and peanut butter sandwiches. Apple is truly the flavor palette of my younger years. Jellies, jams, preserves, jellyfish. I can never tell the difference. I wonder what childhood preserve would taste like. Sweet like cotton candy, pungent like kimchi. I hope one day my boots feel lighter. I wonder if thoughts are truly like fireflies flying towards a bug zapper. If stars are simultaneously exploding and their atoms are in my fingertips and my Jeep and the tar I smear on canvases. And is death really an option? Thank you. Thank you, as always, Mr. Tedesco. Uh, I'm gonna read you a few and I will close out round one. <laughs> um, so if you do, if you've got a few more lined up for round two, please feel free to let me know in the chat that you wanna read again. Um, let me see. Ba -ba -bum. Ah, yes. I, uh, I've read this one before, but it was the old version and I fixed it. I'm taking a workshop with poet Brendan Constantine, who is amazing if you have not uh, checked him out. He has this one poem um, about, I, I can't for the life of me remember the title, but it's a poem he wrote about talking to his um, poetry students, like elementary school students, about what's the opposite of a gun. And it's like, oh, what an incredible poem. Go watch if you can find it on YouTube. It's, it's available on YouTube. Brendan Constantine. Um, I think it's called The Opposite of a Gun is blank or something uh, like that. Anyway, I'm taking a workshop with him. Uh, last night was my second week. And I wrote this poem as homework. Um, and I ended up fixing it. It's a poem I did write earlier, but I fixed it. So I like this version much better. Um, and I will read it for you now. <laughs> Uh, this is part of this, I think it's turning into a series um, about Ashling. Uh, it's just the Gaelic girl's name, uh, meaning vision or beauty, uh, vision or dream, that's it. Um, and I started this series after I had dreams about a little girl um, that kind of looks like a combination of me and my partner. And it freaked me out really bad <laughs> because I am uh, I'm decidedly uh, child free and <laughs> would like to remain that way. Um, and so that dream really freaked me out and I've, I've been writing a series of poems where I'm talking to her um, about how I don't want her, which is <laughs> a little mean, but um, <laughs> they're nice poems at least, kind of. <laughs> Sorry, so Ashling, part two. What will you keep of me? My favorite brocade coat, my innumerable books stuffed with notes scrawled in my indelicate hands. My mother's handwriting is beautiful. I can't make such a promise. I never saw myself as alive past 25. A stained inheritance I hope ends here. I sometimes dare to hope you'd fare better, but my dear heart reminds me often that we are the only things tethering each other to this world. Why should I burden you with this? a legacy of birthdays and anniversaries to remind you of your own mortality. How can I ask you, unborn, to hold my hands as I leave you, to wear my favorite emerald ring on a chain? Why would I burden you with this, knowing the knot it makes of the insides, the clawing of grief at the throat? No, sweet girl, I won't leave you with the weight of me long after I've gone. You. Yeah, that one's a sad one. <laughs> I'm just excited. That's a not a nice one. <laughs> uh, God, all right. Um, I did have a plan in mind, and now I don't have it anymore. I forgot what ones I was going to read. I'm back on my phone, which I realize is a bad idea. I should just have my book. But I can't find my book. Because if you didn't notice, there's a bit of background change uh, from the last few weeks. So I've actually moved into my office in my house, which is awesome. <laughs> so 
So uh, now everything is everywhere again. I have no idea where anything is. So <laughs> the poetry book is gone. Thank God it didn't disappear last week because I would have been up Shit's Creek without anything to save me. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm back on my uh, back on my phone, back in my Google Drive, which is unhelpful. Um, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. One I found in my old notebook um, a while ago, and I did actually like it. So I kind of tried to clean it up and make it pretty because um, it was gross and unkempt in that notebook. <laughs> Needed a trim. <laughs> The title is Love is Patient, Love is Coffee. We were hot and iced coffee. You were damn fine when made right, but people like hanging out with me at the beach. Maybe it was a fault line between us that I could never rouse myself from bed early enough to make your morning cup. And maybe it was a fault in me that I couldn't get it right anyway. But you didn't have to be unkind. I was so proud that morning, dressed for work, breakfast made and coffee ready. You took one sip, asked if I'd poured mine to go and dumped the rest, scalding me with your silence. I took my keys and apologized. You didn't have to be so unkind. <laughs> that was about my shitty ex-boyfriend. Dude was a dick. <laughs> But I liked that poem. I thought I was a little clever in it. Um, all right. Ooh, another good one. Okay. Ah, uh, God, this one's old. This one's old. I think I've I think I've read it a couple times live, but probably only in person. Um, so I don't know if I've actually read it for like all of you. I might not have. Um, anyway, the title is Salt. I've never felt very sexy. Even writing it in the context about myself seems weird, but I've been feeling this craving, contact for days now, ever since you stared me down with that stupid raised eyebrow. We made idiotic small talk. I drank my margarita too fast, trying to keep my cool and it didn't work. The band started playing your song. You took my hand, twirled me around, pulled me in. How my hands burned after all that. I wanted more. Your hand on the small of my back. Mine tangled in your hair, ruined that perfect curl. Pull you close. In my lonesome imaginings, you taste of salt and smell like pine wood warmed by summer's heat. I've been thinking about your lips want to devour that coy smirk. Are they sweet and soft or bitter and hard? Do you know how to use those calloused hands or do you simply hold fast to whatever you can? I wonder if your voice rumbles when you whisper sweet nothings, the sound of summer thunder. I want it all, to feast on your bounty, to languish in your wake. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, that's all from me. And do I have anybody who wants to head into round one, round two? No, no. Oh, Anne, Andrew. I'll let Anne go first. Anne first. <laughs> all right, Anne, I'm asking to unmute you. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna have uh, read one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> onion jam. She nearly said, spread my ashes, visit me without stale hands and chapped breath in places where memories aren't manufactured by whispered worn rope at right angles of slate. Before granny's lips could shape the words, her form shriveled into salted strips of pale cabbage pickled on a paper towel to be wrung out by nurses after bed sheets are replaced and pillows plumped for another fermentation. Her kin later in the family plot, without pomp, said a few words, returned to the mattresses and matters of great granddad's farm, made eggs the mornings after, started up the wheat machines, 
let, uh, let the dogs out to roam as scapegoats. The littlest cousin found it under a bell jar. He used to pilfer her county famed peach jams, but today sought a firefly planetarium. Twice robbed consonants, crusted with last season's onion skins, the boy could barely make out the gentle hand where their juices hadn't peeled like, intentionally like the homemade skin solve of sister. The matriarch meant to say, coal memories, before the midges mate lay eggs and seas. Sift noble shapes from outlines, lest the effigies that blur, superimpose or waste. Winnow out the widgets, a generation of foment false bastards. Dogs matured of dogma, species ousted, and replaced by species, matter without form. Ooh, that was a nice one. Well done. Thank you, Anne. All right. Andrew, asked to unmute. Thank you. Uh, so this one is called How To. You don't have to sing to be a king for every story has a beginning a middle and eventually an end. But the ending doesn't have to be the best thing as you are resting those weary eyes behind heavy pennies to pay the boatman to carry on to the next plane, the next destination, awaiting your arrival, your participation, your new station as those who may sing songs, sling stories, none about your worries, mm. but the who you were how you influence who they are, that those steps you took side by side really did bring them far past the plateau. That's being a believer isn't how so. Thank you. Uh, this one still feels a little, a little funky to me, but we're, we're working through it. That's, that's, how, we, that's how you do it, right? Uh, so this one is, is day one. I don't know why I'm making this more complicated that it tr than it truly needs to be. So many words falling out of my mouth. You'd swear I was a sword swallower as I know they can hurt intentionally or is inverse. This feels like it's dragging, ball and chain, not always in vain. Sometimes I need to be grounded. And I'm sorry you feel like it's de uh, decorated with the shells of dead bodies that were no longer preserved that you and others view trust as more than transactional. I'm sorry for those who hurt you, for those who made us broken parts, refurbished, repacked, sent on their way without instructions and batteries not included. Thank you. That's it, just two? I can go one more. You want me to go one more? You want, you. <laughs> another one another one <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so side note um i've been i've been constantly like thinking about this poem uh and i want to call it i wish it was this easy uh and especially with uh megan the stallion's uh new song body like body yaddy 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 like i want to take that like i want to use that and then I also want to use Justin Bieber's Yummy because like the whole like premise behind it is like, you know, I wish writing was this easy that like to, to then just like rattle off body and then like later on in the, po in the poem to like rattle off like how he does like, cause it's just like, it's so just like repetitive and just like, just, it just and it's just like, oh, hi, here's, here's a hit. Here's, here's a get you. <laughs> <laughs> it's how they get you, drive you crazy. <laughs> fucking watermelon sugar motherfucker <laughs> that was my number one song of 2020 that was oh my so god <laughs> that, that's what your spotify said i was very upset with myself <laughs> <laughs> so like i feel like then that it's appropriate that you know what i mean you you wrote a poem about it or like that's influenced by it like it completely makes sense right Uh, all right. 
I really do like this one. Uh, this is a bridge painter. I was birthed with the burden, the cancer of never letting go, that I'd only bury the hatchet with the casket, burning grudges like bridges, like oil fields. Sure, I could apologize or forgive. I'm learning that everyone will let you down. No one is Superman. If you're drowning, you better learn to swim, build a vessel, or swallow the ocean, especially as she is unrelenting. Sirens may try to save you or feast on your bones. It's not, as they say, under the sea. It will claim us all, fill our bellies with plastic, choke us with uncut six-pack rings, acidity that will bleach us, bring the stock pot to a boil. The ice is melting. Nola is flooding. Deal or no deal, whose line is it anyways? The souls of the lobsters are laughing. Thank you. Oh, that was a last line. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, are you sure you're sitting this one out? Yeah? Okay. I actually don't have anything else for you guys either. Unless you want me to read that watermelon sugar poem. Oh, I would love the watermelon sugar poem. I would love that. <laughs> I was I was also right. I was also gonna make a request for Gerard Way because I'm I'm kind oh. of excited. Yeah, sure. Requests. Jeez. I know last week I tried to do like my greatest hits. I was like, what's like a good, what are good ones? <laughs> it was funny. Amanda was all like, oh, I, I've never, I, I feel like I've never really seen this out of Sarah. Like that she's, she seems a little, you know what I mean? Like she's, she's trying to just like get her footing up there. Like that we're all, we were all just a little fucking nervous. And it's like, yeah. what do you expect? We haven't done this shit in front of people in like how long now? Like, yes, it was nuts. That's the whole thing. I was like, oh God, like people, there, there's humans out there. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can see people's like entire selves. It's not just their faces, you know? It was like, oh God. And everybody had masks on and like it was, I mean, it was great to see people, but it was just so so surreal um but it was nice and I also felt like I couldn't act right like Friday and Saturday I was like all amps like <laughs> fine let's go and I was like no <laughs> pandemic <laughs> it was not it was not good um I can't find this fucking poem <laughs> maybe it's in here yeah, I got to figure out what I'm going to do for the next set. Like, I feel like I, I, I feel like I want to cherry pick from, from the last set with, you know what I mean? A couple of repeats, yeah. like your but, good also ones. Like, but also like switch it out, switch it up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Cause I mean, like more people are probably going to watch next time, but also like, well, you know, we don't want to disappoint people. <laughs> It was the same shit you said last week. I'm like, no, I, I'm saying it differently this time. I'm putting a different inflection on <laughs> this word. <laughs> it's completely different. All right, I found it. Okay, so this one was just titled Strawberries after Harry Styles' Watermelon Sugar. <laughs> An offering I make to you at the altar of our table. Strawberries, sweet cream, deep red, soft touch. Sun's out, tops off, clouds smile. Left hand caught in the wind, right on the nape of your neck. Firm pressure of your hand on my thigh. Sundays without a plan, let this sweetness burn my skin hot to your touch. Golden hour, end of June. Gentle wave of cotton sheets, what more is there to do? Kiss me once more, taste of strawberries, sweet cream. Deep red, soft touch. Thank you. So that was that one. And my ode to, there he is. Ode to Gerard Way. The, the official title of this, by the way, is Ode to Gerard Way circa 2007, ending in an ode to Gerard Way circa 2017 the full title <laughs> which is similar to a follow-up voice song extra long title <laughs> to you oh jet black hair dyed mascara streaked 
firecracker, you screeching, scowling, skinny jean clad monument to teenage lust. Thank you for your jazz hands, your overdramatic rock and roll, for your goth boy band aesthetic, which I have carried over into my adult life as a standard for all the things I like, music, clothing, men. I've kept the posters that used to line my bedroom walls. They're hidden in my bookshelf and I spread them out on my floor when I'm lonely for your company. You were coming clean with your demons and I watched you told me you drank to forget how terrified you were of everything. I capped the bottle on my nightstand, tattooed awake and unafraid on my wrists because I need, needed to. Needed to remind myself that I am a witness to my life. I cannot hide from it. No matter how terrified I am, no matter how much the world asks of me. You married a girl and she's beautiful, had a baby and named her something cool. A grown-up life I couldn't yet imagine for myself. The band broke up a few years later, and I'm telling you now, I cried. Played through all your old albums and asked them why. Then you emerged from your background life, graying hair, messy beard, and you were okay. Healthy. The laugh lines around your mouth deeper than the furrows in your brow. Happy. Proof of what might be possible when the chemicals in your brain finally snap into place, when you finally overcome what haunts you, when you find peace, and you are still my favorite poet. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, that's it from me. Um, I'm actually gonna unmute everybody. So, oh, Andrew, you are not muted. Um, Catherine, if you want to unmute and hang out. Hi. Welcome <laughs> to the Zoom room chit chat. Um, how's everybody doing? Everybody feeling good? Keeping healthy? Good. Very good. Did I? I just, I just wanted to say real quick, um, I liked the poems that you guys did in the second speed round or whatever. So you can pull those and as well as the ones do you like, as well as ones from the first round. If you're looking to do yet more for oh, next for, time at, at, at next Star time. Store. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you'll figure it out anyway, not without in my help. I'm just I'm just saying, <laughs> if you're looking for Ed Case, you wanted any um, feedback, there it is. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So, it's more like... It's more feeling comfortable saying it and knowing that it's on the internet, like for forever. Cause <laughs> at least with these, it's like eh, I nothing's picked, forever. Right. Eh. If you save everything, it's like saving nothing. Because <laughs> there's so much. That's true. That's true. There's, Just it's, there's so much. I mean, who can I mean, I guess somebody with some like spectacular search engine could go. Andrew Tedesco, he did, he said this in 2021 and our Sarah, Sarah Jane Mulvey, she read this poem and, you know, you know, so, you know, so forth and so on. Instead of the, don't let it, don't let it the track collected you down. letters, you know, collected letters of, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's probably one of the things that's also good about um, the um, Coke. I mean, I have no problem with not having to drive places and doing Zoom and, and yeah, you know, oh gee, that's horror is not having to drive. Gee, no, nah, yeah, I can do without it. But um, but the co-creative center, the thing about a lot of that, a lot of public performances, it's, it kind of happens out in the ether. You say it, you do it, it's over. Mm -hmm. And it, it, if it was good, good. If it's bad, eh, who cares? It was, it's over. Right. But um, and that's so cool. And so, was it cold that night when you were out there? Yeah, it was pretty cold. <laughs> But it was, uh, it wasn't windy, so it was actually, you know, terrible. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Like, that's yeah, huge. that's awesome. No, it was really, it was really fun. And the the <laughs> backdrop was amazing. And the that studio is so cool. And you cool? Know, projected that your voices were so clear and booming. And all the that way down, <laughs> when I walked back to my car uh, down Union Street, you could hear it like, <laughs> hear so much. So it was, awesome. it was so cool. Yeah. That was, I walked out during Andy's set. I went out to like walk around and take pictures and Nick was so loud. And then of course, Andy, you're just naturally loud. So then like, it was, 
<laughs> so then I walk outside and it's like, we're echoing all the way down Purchase and Union. And I was just like, oh shit, my voice sounded like this out here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, it was, it was great. And I'm sure the fishermen could hear it. They were probably like, nice. <laughs> oh, really fun. It was so cool to hear poetry outside in the night winter air with all the stars out. It was just mm. ethereal. I loved it. So, so Ooh, fun. That's a good thing to think about. <laughs> ethereal. You can get weird with it because you're not <laughs> You guys are like uh, calling out from, out to the harbor. Oh God! <laughs> I hope so not. That's, yeah, that's good. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like a siren song, except mm -hmm. maybe in, in the reverse. It's more like a, a lighthouse song. Mm. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> oh, God. I, I'm going to turn into a pumpkin soon, so I'm probably going to go. But I, but okay. that was so awesome to see you, and I'm and and it's it's so good to see you guys read it at at, at Star Store. So yeah, I think between what you've already read and what you've re read to tonight, you've got plenty to pick from for the next time. And and it was awesome to, to hear your stuff, and awesome to hear that you were there, and that's cool. And it's good to know that you're, you you guys' voice has carried well down the street. It's kind of weird. I, one thing that crossed my mind is, too, is like Sixth Street, which is a poem that, that is where like Maya grew up and where she, one of her poems. So mm -hmm. Sixth Street's not far. So that would have, it would have, it would have probably ricocheted off the buildings yeah. and carried down mm -hmm. Sixth Street. So her voice, like when she's reading about Sixth Street, Sixth Street's here. Oh, what are you talking? What are you saying about this? So Are you saying about the street? About Maya, like for the fa like, I completely understand how how Nick feels about wanting like a strong closer, which I I absolutely do not mind being mm. like if we view me that way as far as, like, but like to fucking go after Maya, I'm all like, this is fucking suicide. Uh, yeah, just set yourself on fire, right? Yeah, that's the thing. You Hello, have I'm to on be, fire. You have to go for it after that. <laughs> she yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Um, like, you know, I need to go, like, full Vietnam Buddhist monk on this mother... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Here's your, here's your petrol here, pal. No! <laughs> not nice. Could, could I make a request for for uh, being self-serving and, and do an encore round? I sure. found one that I'd like to try out if, if you would... Absolutely. Allison. Allison. Go for it. Uh, so this one is uh, There Are No Time Machines. Gary V told me, as he has told many, that there are no time machines. We can't go back to the future. I can't go back to bringing you to your appointment. I can't go back to a Christmas where we are surrounded by extended family, all of the aunties, uncles, and cousins, the finest Filipino American feast, Lumpia. Ponset, a ham with all the fixins, hollow hollow, and your apple pie, for which I do not have a recipe for, which is surprising for your tattered copy of Good Housekeeping's illustrated cookbook is full of handwritten cookie recipes, tons of pulled magazine recipes, which is all surprising for a diabetic but it wasn't always that way. Making banana bread, standing on a kitchen chair so I could reach the counter, countless seasons of crafting cookies. I wish I had more photos that truly recall seasons past. Cooking is the closest to any portal that I have to go back to you. It's the biggest gift you've given me that I get to share with those that I love. Merry Christmas to you and yours. May we drink and be merry for Festivus is the best of us. Thank you. Okay. Did you submit that for tidings or? I'm not sure. Like, uh, it's not even date. Like, it's um. just, like, I hate, I hate that I am this way, that, like, I start all these fucking different books, and shit is just in, like, nine million different places, yeah. and I'm like, can we, can, can we get organized this time? Can we put everything in one, one nice little bucket, like? It's not fun. Well, let's well, see, there's keep another that point. Doc. Keep that on doc for uh, Tidings 22. Yeah, also, I mean, that's 21. also would be good for, I mean, the hell of the fact that it's like March or whatever. The next <laughs> time you might read, just you could put. You can also include that if that, if you didn't weren't already sufficiently confused by choices, you can put that in your 
you can put that in your like yeah, well please. maybe i could read this poem or this one or this one you know yeah, good one. there you go very good and and you know and you can have and you can imagine it booming down the streets of, of downtown <laughs> Absolutely. thanks for that Anne. i really i i wasn't there so i didn't i it's it's and also well, oh sorry uh, sarah was talking about that and like when you did it you're at you're a set of a stroll outside yeah cool yeah it's very cool all right team was that what so this is a question i rarely ask was mm -hmm. i too loud no when no never but, because I, I remember that Sarah was saying that when she was outside doing her stroll and, you know what I mean, taking photos and everything, that she's like, when you sang, it was so loud. It was. I think it was because, like, the kid doing the sound stuff was not prepared for you to sing. So, like, your singing was loud. And then he was like, oh, shit. And he, like, turned you down a little bit. But it was fine. It wasn't too loud. But, like, your singing was was good and i, I think I, it I caught to, like attention people were like from the sound guy i need to be like do you see me i'm louder than everybody else <laughs> Not three <true>. notches <laughs> everything three notches down at least yeah at least <laughs> i think you're four on the karaoke machine but <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so oh you want to hear a funny story about karaoke like when i first started doing karaoke mm. uh so my buddy adam uh was this karaoke dj out in taunton at this shitty little fucking club and uh that was just where i started to go in and like that was where i kind of really started like falling into what 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 karaoke is for me now and in the beginning he he didn't even know how to mic me and he was like you would redline my fucking system no one has ever redlined my system like yeah. no one no one like hat like has projected or is just naturally that loud that yeah. they would redline shit and it's, it's like ever shit. since you did that like i know like when you come up that like i need to change shit Hard to be a nerd, but what's redlining? So, like, redlining is basically like maxing out the like okay. that, like <laughs> that levels are 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 like uh, there's too much. There's too much input, like <laughs> the little like lights on, like a like a CD player or something. You know how like lights yeah. sometimes will jump. Yeah, like on, a, like on an old like equalizer, yeah. like when you would see like levels, like from, oh, yeah. like Shut from down. how loud things get. Mm -hmm. So like it's green, <laughs> like it's. Seem like when things are good, then gets yellow, then gets red because like, uh, things are like too loud. I yeah, see. I was like here, right. and, and his system was just like, "What the fuck are you doing to me right now? What is going on?" <laughs> yeah, well, you can always. I mean, not and this is not an ex no, this is not expert speech. Anyone's you know, but you can always go further away from the mic and like if you see people who are like these great diva projector stingers they, they kind of tend to go wah, 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 and mike <laughs> kind of goes further and, and closer oh okay i'm gonna get very close now i'm gonna speak. oh he does that too no oh, he, he does, does that. that too he just he's just loud as shit <laughs> so no it's your arm's not 25 feet long so right. Right. he doesn't have that much to work with. so too bad <laughs> yeah <too much. laughs> well um, i guess i just tough tough you know it's, just gonna it's have to... still strange to me to see that like uh i i keep i keep getting uh fucking uh sponsored posts for this uh not not the play arcade here but the there's an arcade in uh providence that's like also like a club or whatever oh. mm. i or i think it's like i think it's like full play like it's it's a it's very close to the same name or whatever mm -hmm. but like They've been advertising that they do karaoke on, I think, like Friday and Saturday nights, and I'm all like, "How? Yeah. How does this? How does this work? Why? Why? Like, why? Like, why right no. now?" I'm that's, like, "No, I, that's Rhode Island's like COVID that. spike right there. There you go." Right, and you know what I mean, like, <sighs> like, <sighs> right. <laughs> I'm like, I want to do the things, but I want to do the things safely. Yes. Like, Yes. I remember making a post that I'm all like, why can't, like, why hasn't anybody just figured out to do, like, when it was still warm, to do fucking karaoke outside? Like, why are we not doing this? Mm -hmm. Like, I have no problem wearing my mask outside, like, and I'm like, and, and people are like, well, maybe they can't hear you with the mask. I'm all like, motherfucker, you, you fucking sure about that? <laughs> they can't hear you. <laughs> I'm hear like, you, you have not been around me, like, like, 
<laughs> like you know, the fabric ones are fine. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact like with my like plastic encased respirator, they're all like, I can't like I can't understand you. And I'm all like, it's because I have plastic around my entire face because I don't trust any of you motherfuckers. The thing about karaoke is that it it throws it further out because you're singing. Right. And that's why you can't do it. Like it's not only is talking without a mask on, but then even with a mask on, like you're just you're mm -hmm. projecting too hard. You might and then you're all sharing the same microphone. Like it just it's bad. Yeah, I noticed it's you guys bad. were cleaning the mics mics between uh, yeah. sessions. And yep. then like and then another time was like like Nick was speaking and then Sarah, I think you were right after him and like you had to like, okay, Stan comes down now. <laughs> Had to. Oh, right. I don't know if we would want to think about it for next time, but it's like there are all, there are also like what disposable mic covers, I believe, right? Like, yeah. I don't I don't know if that's that's more practical or like if we should just like if like if it's it's a wired mic, like we could just shut it off like in between cleanings, <laughs> so that way. Oh yeah, uh, the I, yeah, was, I heard it they were saying times in the feedback, but the kid on the sound eventually figured out like oh wait turn it off because nick did it once and then i did it and it, i didn't hear that sound again but i think they'll you know that was the first night for the first night that was pretty right. pretty smooth so they threw us we're, we're, fire we're, but break in, right? exactly we trial by fire but i think we did pretty well i think you should all wear those um sort of like microphones performance mics that were like like in like arena rock sort of oh, mics oh my God. the headphones <laughs> headphone here and a little mic that comes around and each should have your own and like you know so you can like you, and you can like sort of point as if you're pointing at somebody living up in the cheap seats you know of, of yeah, the, the cvpa <laughs> doesn't have that kind of budget <laughs> Well, you just point, you know, there hasn't, there hasn't you, been you anyone think, there. You think that they would for all of the debt that I'm in. Like. You could go to like <laughs> right. a thrift, you could probably go to the thrift <laughs> store. It might be some child's mic that's kind of like looks like that. And you can still use the actual mic to actually speak into. Just use it as a prop. You can make something out of cardboard or, or like Q-tips <laughs> or painted black or something. Um, uh, pipe cleaners. Improvise. Love it. Oh Lord. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm 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 turning into a pumpkin, but it's great to see you guys. And and I, I have to also say I, I admire the, the whole sort of like um um toolkit that's over your shoulder there and, and oh, the, the, yeah, uh, the, the, the 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 uh, the the flyer. The place that like all the art shit happens. <laughs> cool. Very good. Anyway, it's all great right, to see, it was great to hear you guys read. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Oh, you're quite Evan, welcome. Thank you so much, as always, and thank you so much, and Sarah. Thank always you. a pleasure to share any form of stage with all y'all. Good night.